Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Peter Xu from HGNH International Asset Management. It's my pleasure to be here to talk about the Arcufi business and uh, the capital market of the China. So um, let me start with uh, the basic introduction of our group. So um, HGNH Asset Management is a sub-company of HGNH International Financial Group, which we locate in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, our mother company and headquarter uh, is Nanhua Futures in Hangzhou, mainland China. And Nanhua Futures established in 1996, which is the first, I think one of the first futures broker company in mainland China. And we, our Hong Kong branch opened in 2006, which is also one of the first Chinese broker company to have the sub branch in overseas, which is Hong Kong. And uh, after almost um, 14 years development, we have gained many licenses in Hong Kong, including security, futures, asset management, and uh, some other advisory. Uh, licensed under the Hong Kong SFC. Mm, we also have many sub companies in London and Singapore, Chicago. Uh, we have we have the clearance membership in most of the major global futures industry uh, and exchange. Two thousand eleven, so it's almost ten years, and we got the RQF qualification in two thousand thirteen, which is I think the number thirties inst institution to have this RQF title. So RQF is uh, let me just break the words: is the RMB qualified foreign institutional investor. So. Um, Okay, so um, besides this RQF business, our our company also have the Cayman Fund and uh, asset management account. We also have the adversary um, service. We have a um, SPC company in Cayman Island. We also doing the FOF. So RQF is one of our major business because we are the Chinese background, Chinese broker background company, and. Uh, I think we are the first group to get the RQF title. Okay, so before to talk too much about the RQF, we want to have a basic background and idea. So, so uh, about the Chinese capital market. So as we all know. Um, Compared to the United States, which have more, more than two, around 100, 200 years uh, history of the stock exchange and the futures exchange and all the major financial development, uh, derivatives, derivatives in innovation, but China is, is relatively young because since the end of the Cultural Revolution and uh, the Chinese government starts to um, break down the chain and uh, start to take a look overseas in 1978. S uh, the first stock field, uh, stock exchange established in Shenzhen and Shanghai in 1990. So it's only 30 years history of the of the the major de developing country, which is the second largest economic group entity. In the world right now, but even though our financial uh, capital market history is relatively short, and uh, so all the policy is due to emerging. So as just like many developing country, the capital market is not fully opened to the overseas market to the foreign investor. For example, before 2000, there is no way to 
enter the Chinese capital market as a foreigner or foreign institution. You have to have a local company in mainland China, or you are the citizen of the of the China PRC, in order to entering the Chinese capital market. But this has changed after the Deng Xiaoping's reform, maybe after twenty years. So. By two years after the establishment of the Shenzhen and Shanghai Stock Exchange in two in nineteen ninety two, uh, the 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 security market to have the B shares, so which is the U uh, S dollar uh, labeled shares market, and uh, the first policy to have the foreign investor enter enter the mainland China market is the Q fee, which removes the R, removes the RMB. So it's a United States dollar uh, as a qualified foreign investor. So this policy start by 2002. But by that time, the targets, the target items which Q fee can invest is very limited and the Q fee's status is it's very hard to get because they have a, such a high capital requirement for the qualified investor. And uh, therefore, after, after nine years, in 2011, the RQ fee start to, on the table of the, of the regulator's desk. So, by that time, the I think the one of the government main goal is to establish the RMB's importance of the world because since the Chinese economy growing so fast, so right now we are the second largest economic entity. But ten years ago, we might be the number four or number three. So as the economic grows. The Chinese currency, which is which is onshore CNY off uh, in, the, in Hong Kong and overseas market is CNH. They want to they want to uh, like the international trade. They want to clear as the CNH. So so at this moment, two thousand twenty, I think only ten percent of the global trade, which is uh, is on the RMB base. Uh, so therefore, there's a still a long way to go. The United States dollar, after the Brinton Forest system established, have the dominant power. So, but right now, the Chinese yuan, the RMB, is one of the reserve currency of the most of the central bank. So, how to make the Chinese currency more influential? This is a major question. For the Beijing government, mm, the first way, the first important advantage they have by that time, ten years ago, is Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong back to back to China in nineteen ninety seven, and it's under the one country two system policy, the Hong Kong become one of the key point to connecting the domestic Chinese market and the overseas market. And therefore, it automatically became the major CNH, which is uh, offshore RMB, it's reserve center. Um, I think, so since Hong Kong have this nat natural advantage, so the Chinese government by that time to introduce RQ fee, the, the very naturally to select Hong Kong as the main point. So even right, right now, I think almost 70 or 80 percent of the RQ fee is located in Hong Kong. So, so let me show the uh, a a chart so you can see by the 2002 which is a QFI introduced and 2003 which is another economic partnership 
and RQF is almost 10 years later than the QF because by, by the 2011, the RMB want to have more inferential power for the overseas market. So that's why they, they, they have the RQF. And uh, by the time they introduced RQF, there's still um, there's a lot of advantages because the firstly they ex extend the um, the qualification. So in the QF, not many institution can be qualified as a QF. But for the RQF, the requirement is much lower for the capital requirement. So RQF expand dramatically. So HGNH Group as a management is I think number thirty number 30 or number 37 something to have this RQV qualification. But right now we have almost 300 institution in Hong Kong alone to have the RQV qualification. And before, um, and because of the QV and RQV, it's the first time for the foreign investor can enter the Chinese stock market, bond market, ETF market. I think almost all the um, uh, exchange products. So, but there's still certain limited. Um, for example, they cannot invest in the private fund. They cannot engage in commodity futures. The only futures products contract allow by the QFI and the RQFI by that time is the stock futures. And stock futures is for the uh, the cover the position only. There's no 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 one side long or one, one side short. You, you have to do as uh, cover your position in the uh, in the RQFI account. So but as 10 years ago, this is the first opportunity to, to the global investor to have a look of the Chinese um, financial market. And in 2014, when the uh, chairman Li Xiaojia of the Hong Kong Exchange to introduce the Shanghai and Hong Kong Stock Connect, and uh, two years later, the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect, and later on, the Bond Connect, which all these kind of tremendous innovation, which Hong Kong Exchange uh, as a bridge to, they, they, they want to link the Hong Kong overseas and uh, the mainland China, which they, they do very successfully. After all this later innovation established, the importance of the RQF has been decreased because before, 2014, RQF and QF is the only way to enter the China Chinese market. But the other way certainly is uh, like UF to open a foreign holding company in the mainland China. But that is very difficult, and not many people want to do that. But after the 2014, after all this kind of a connection established, they can do through the Hong Kong Exchange. They do not have to go for RQF because RQF certainly there is uh, uh, some delay and there's a cost of the RQF. If they can trade stocks and bonds through the Hong Kong exchange, then it will be the primary choice. But there are some disadvantage for the, those kind of connection and the left uh, RQF is still valuable. Uh, which is the Hong Kong and Shanghai and Hong Kong and Shenzhen connections are not covered all the stock in mainland China. Right now, at this moment, it's only around 2,000 stocks. So many stocks it, are not included into this, those connections. You have, if you want to invest, you have to go through the RQF. And the secondary, by the Hong Kong and by those Hong Kong and the China connection, you do not you do not have the voting. So if if you want to influence the uh, the the company's governing or something, if you want to vote during the board meeting, you have to go to the RQF. So those connections do not give you the voting. 
So that's why after the Hong Kong exchange make makes so much progress, our QFI and QFI are still very valuable. And many people are still doing that. But certainly compared to 10 years ago, the importance of the RQV is decreased because there's other way as a, comp as a supplement. So as we, uh, you, might, you might know that uh, two months ago, um, in the September of 2020, uh, since the RQV trading volume is decreased, decreasing because of the Hong Kong exchange to provide many other way to go into the China market, the regulator, the, the Chinese SAFE, they have made two new policy for the QV and RQV. The one is actually there's no such differences between QV and RQV because right now RQV can have different currency. So we can equalize QV and RQV right now. And secondly, they removed the lockup period for RQV. And uh, thirdly, I think um, they, they extend the broker limitation because before we can only have three brokers in China, but right now there's no limitation on that. And they removed the quota basis. Right now we do not have to apply quota in Beijing. Right now we we actually we have unlimited quota. So that's a very huge advantage. And uh, the most important thing is they extend the investment target, investment items for the IQ fee. So as we can see right now, we have many, many different so from one to nine and uh, so let me summarize the most of people the most interesting things the first one is the commodity futures were on the list so if you want to trade Dalian, Zhengzhou and uh, Shanghai the futures exchange products it became possible and for INE because before that there's only four or five internationalized futures contracts like the INE, Crude Oil, the Dalian Exchange Iron, and just four or five. But right now, all the commodity futures is on the list. And we are, we are waiting for the commodity exchange to give us a very detailed handbook to to. To, to make a guideline. But right now, as the top top regulator, the Beijing has approved. So the second thing besides the commodity future is the private fund. Before that, RQF and QF can only invest in public fund. But right now, the private fund is on the list, and uh, which is kind of booming for for the overseas investor. So I think the commodity future and the private fund are most uh, two key points for this new policy. And uh, um, I think it's time to, let me introduce how to, uh, before that, if you want to have a look of the full details of the new regulation, Please go to the CSRC website below this point. You can download the English version for the, uh, actually the update documents quite often. So you can check on this CSRC, which is a kind of a SFC website in the mainland China. Uh, you can have all the historical documents they, they released to have a look. And for the um, uh, client onboarding procedure, um, HGNH, HGNH Asset Management has doing the RQV for seven years right now. We have we are very experienced. We are one of the first to doing this, and uh, and as a Chinese background broker company, our our mother company Nanhua Futures is the first futures broker to list in the Shanghai Stock Exchange. 
So our background is very strong. Um, and our credibility is double A, which is the highest in the futures broker industry. So the client onboarding, the first one is we, we only take the professional institutional investor. We need to do the client KYC onboarding. After all the document received, it might take between two to three weeks and if we decide uh, the QSA is passed, we might connect the custodian bank for the segregated custodian account opening. So all the, all the client fund is in the custodian in mainland China. Um, this custodian bank might take up to four to five weeks and then after the bank account established, we can open the broker account in mainland China. So the, in the future and the, and the stock side. So the entire procedure, we can estimate about six to eight weeks to onboarding a new RQF client. And um, I think I, I need to mention the uh, uh, the cash flow procedure. The first, if if we establish this uh, this kind of the um, asset management agreement, the client's money go to the Hong Kong uh, HGNH International Asset Management client account first. Then we move this money into the mainland China custodian bank account, and then go to the broker. So it's kind of a very separated uh, aggregate account. So you have the full protection. And uh, for more details, or you want to know more, please contact the uh, International Department of the Nanhua Futures or HGNH Group, or you can email me at uh, this address. So I'm, I will be more than happy to answer any kind of questions. Okay, so it's my pleasure to be here to have a very brief introduction of the RQV we are doing, and please also check our website uh, in Henghua Group Hong Kong to have more information. So, okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for all the attention.